Our second investment analysis method is the accounting rate of return. The accounting rate of return measures the average annual rate of return over the asset's useful life. So basically how much of a return the asset brings over the asset's useful life. Unlike the payback method, this uses the entire asset's life. The accounting rate of return is a method that uses accounting income, not the net cash inflows. Every question that they give you will give you the net cash inflows and you need to convert those cash inflows to operating income. And your formulas will help you do that. So the formula for calculating your accounting rate of return is average annual operating income from your asset divided by initial investment. As I mentioned earlier, your questions will typically give you cash, not accounting income. So to convert your cash inflows to your accounting income, all you need to do is subtract your depreciation expense. So your accounting rate of return formula can also be stated as average annual net cash flows minus annual depreciation expense divided by initial investment. Let's do an example next. This is the same example we used for the payback method, but um, what we're saying here is again, we are going to invest 240000 we expect these annual cash inflows or cash savings and then they've given you some additional information. It says calculate the accounting rate of return assuming a 30,000 residual value. If you remember from accounting one, a residual value is how much we expect the asset to be worth at the end of its useful life and we need to use that residual value when we calculate our depreciation. So whenever you're calculating your accounting rate of return, the first step is to calculate your average income. To do this, we first add up the annual cash flows that they have given us. So when you add up all the annual cash flows, we come up with $360,000. We have to get an average cash flow. It's over six years, so average cash flow is $360,000 divided by six giving us a $60,000 average cash flow. Next, we have to calculate our depreciation, annual depreciation expense. You know that depreciation is calculated by cost minus residual value divided by the number of years in useful life. That's if we're using the straight line method, which we are. So your cost is 240000 your residual value is 30000 and the number of years of useful life is six years. That gives you a depreciation expense of $35,000 per year. Now we've got your annual average annual cash flows. You have your annual depreciation expense. To calculate your average net income, what you do is you subtract your depreciation expense from your cash flows. So the numerator here is your annual average operating income. To calculate the accounting rate of return, you do divide that by your initial investment, which is 240000 giving you an accounting rate of return of 10.42%. So is this good or bad? In order to answer that question, you have to know what our management's required rate of return is. So you would compare that to the required rate of return. If the required rate of return is 9%, this is great. This passed our test. If the required rate of return is 12%, this is not good. This would have failed our test. Next, let's take a look at your decision rule for accounting rate of return. Your decision rule is, should we invest in the capital asset or not? If your expected accounting rate of return exceeds the re required rate of return, then you would invest. If your expected accounting rate of return is less than the required rate of return, you would not invest in your asset.